study that we published about three weeks ago now, or at least it was until it disappeared. There it is, okay. Um, I was approached by, uh, because of my interest in uranium, and I've done a lot of research on uranium, and what I've established is that uranium is very, very much more dangerous than anybody ever thought, particularly inhaled uranium, because that gets straight into the body very quickly. Um, because of my interest in uranium, uh, I was approached by a lady called Mala Hamden, who is a, a, an Iraqi uh, living in London, who wanted to try and see if the reports of uh, congenital malformation and cancer in this town of Fallujah were correct. In, in the last year, a number of doctors from Fallujah wrote a letter, an open letter, saying that there was a, they thought that there was a huge increase in congenital malformation and also they thought in cancer in this town. And they thought that this was because of the, the materials that were used by the, the, America, the US led forces in 2004. In early to, to, after the Iraq War in 2003, Fallujah became a sort of stronghold for, re, for, for revolu not revolution, but whatever you like to call it, you know, um, freedom fighters, whichever side you're on. Um, and and uh, the, the United States couldn't make much of an impact on Fallujah, so they attacked it in early 2004, but they didn't succeed. They were, they were beaten off, and this became a very big uh, event for the Arab world, who saw for the first time that the American technological war machine could be defeated by ordinary people on the ground. And the reason they defeated it, of course, is because they were fighting from house to house. And it's very difficult for a technological war machine to deal with people who are sniping away at them from behind dustbins and then running and fighting from somewhere else, as the British found that up in, our, in Northern Ireland. So having lost that particular battle, they decided after, just after the re-election of President Bush to go in there and flatten the town, which they did. They used more uh, munitions on that town, according to the British who were observing, the British weren't involved in this, than have, have ever been used in a concentrated way in any recent war. They absolutely dropped everything on that. They used, they used white phosphorus and they used all sorts of weapons that nobody had ever seen before. And the, uh, the deaths were horrific. The, the, the doctors reported injuries. I've got photographs, which I haven't got time to show you, but scary photographs of the kind of thing that, that was done. And some of these weapons were very peculiar. And some of the illnesses were very peculiar. For example, people were found who were burned, completely burned, and yet their clothing was intact. So there's some weapon that appears to burn the people, that, 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 that burn the... the um, the body, but leaves the clothing. Uh, and there are a lot of other ghastly things that, 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 that we saw that in pictures and reports and so on. But unfortunately, but anecdotal, in, in, in the real world, you know, in the world of science, anecdotal evidence is not sufficient. And, and of course, the, Iraq, the Americans, when, when asked about this, they said, we have no scientific evidence that there's any problem, that there's any increase in congenital malformation that there are any increases in cancer. So Malak asked me if there was anything we could do. And I said, well, yes, we can do the kind of study that we did in Northern Ireland, in, in Carlingford, on the map that you didn't see, because somehow it got swallowed into the machinery. Um, we can go and knock on doors, and what you do is a really simple epidemiological study. Uh, and it's, it, it used to be the type of study that used to be used in the tropics a long time ago, before there were any official data, if you, had, if you were a missionary or if you were a doctor working in Africa, you know, there's no official figures there, so if you want to know what the rate of some illness is, you have to go and ask the people. So you need to have a, a, a database, you need to have a group of people that you study, which is a sample from the population, and the sample has to be big enough for you to find what you're looking for, and then you just write down the ages of the people and their sexes, and you ask them how many people have got whatever it is you're looking for, and then you have a, a, a rate, a, a, you know, so you have the rate of Bilharzia, Per, per thousand population, or a rate of cancer per thousand population, or whatever. So it's not particularly difficult to do this, uh, although it's a little tedious. So I said to her, I'll devise a questionnaire, and you see, you get in touch with your people in Fallujah, and we will administer the questionnaire, but keep it secret, because nobody's going to want this to come out. You know, the, the Americans in particular closed off the city after the attack, they wouldn't let journalists in, they wouldn't let doctors in, they wouldn't let the International Atomic Energy Agency in to see if there was any radioactivity there. Um, 
and, and then they slowly bulldozed all of the debris into the river, um, the Euphrates, Euphrates River. So nobody had been in there, and if you went to there, um, the BBC sent a journalist in there, and people were threatened with being killed, and people were kidnapped, and they were afraid to be shot, and so it's, it's quite a heavy place. But we managed to get seven, uh, 11 people in there who were looking at, um, at the race, and they, where we, uh, okay. This is, and these are, oh, we seem to have jumped down now. It was there a, a, a charter before this one? No, there wasn't, but I was going to talk about what we found. But anyway, this is all right, right? we can do this. Um, I've got a... Uh, yeah, okay. Well, in the end, we, we managed to get to 700 houses, and we managed to get a database of 4,800 people uh, across the whole age span. And this, this is the breakdown of the ages of, of, the, of the people that we, we, we had reporting. Uh, and these are the number of cancers that, we, that were reported. Uh, and the number of infant deaths that were reported. But if we go back up, we go back up to the abstract row, and then, we can, then I can just tell you what the results are. Uh, this is the abstract here, up a bit. There, right. Okay. Um, well, what we found, um, by comparing the population rates to the rates in Egypt and Jordan, because we thought that that was a fairly reasonable comparison, uh, and not to compare them to Iraq, because in any case there's no data for Iraq, but even if we had, we've got problems because other parts of Iraq are probably contaminated also. So we looked at Egypt and Jordan, and what we found was that for cancer, we had about four times, in, this was in the five years prior to the survey, which, which was done at the beginning of this year, in the five years back then to uh, 2006, in terms of cancer, we or 2005, we found that there was um, 62 cases of all cancers, which gave a relative risk of four times the Egypt average. But that included 16 cases of childhood cancer, which, which gave a relative risk of 12.6. So this is 12.6 times the childhood cancer. It's a very large relative risk for childhood cancer. And then we found, and these are highly statistically significant. You can see that the p-values, that's the probability this could have occurred by chance, was very low, one in several million. Um, and for lymphomas and leukemias, we had uh, we had leukemia. We had 38 times, 38 times the expected for leukemias. This is unbelievably uh, large number, extraordinary. Uh, and we also find increases in breast cancer and in lymphomas and brain tumors, but not increases, interestingly enough, in the normally expected high-rate cancers like lung cancer. Then we also looked at the birth rates, we looked at the, the mean um, infant mortality rate over that period and we found that there was a, a, a high level of infant mortality, about four, four or five times the amount that we would expect on the basis of Egypt. So, so basically that supports what, what the doctors were reporting in their letter. Uh, and then also, because I'm interested in this and because of Hiroshima, after Hiroshima, they looked at the, the geneticists looked at sex ratio. Sex ratio is the ratio of boys to girls who are born in any population. In normal human populations, it's very, very standard. The, the, the number of boys born to girls is 1,050 boys are born to 1,000 girls. It's absolutely standard, and it very rarely diverts at all from that number. Um, unless there's some problem. Now, there was, uh, in Hiroshima, of course, there was radiation. And what they found was there was a reduction in the number of boys. And this is exactly what we found here. And the reason for that is that if you, if you fire a shotgun at the DNA and you just shoot bits of it away, then of course, you know, the people will die because they need their DNA. But if you have um, a boy, you only have one X chromosome. And if you're a girl, you have two X chromosomes. So if you have a sort of general genetic stress on the DNA, you will kill the boys preferentially because they cannot afford to lose the X chromosome, if it's lost, then they've had it, you see. Whereas if the girls can lose one X chromosome, they can still survive. So that's why you get this sex ratio effect. And this is what we found. We found 860 boys <coughs> to 1,000 girls, which is a marked reduction in the sex ratio, much worse than, than what was found after Hiroshima. So what can we conclude from all of this? Um, well, first of all, we can, we can certainly conclude that something very serious happened in the way of genetic mutation in 2004 because it was those children uh, who suffered the largest levels of infant mortality and um, sex ratio changes. It was 
because that cohort that had the big sex ratio change. So whatever it was that happened to this population, it was in 2004 that it happened. So that it identifies the war and the attacks by the Americans in 2004 as the cause. Uh, now that cause doesn't identify the agent. We don't know what the agent is, uh, but we will probably find it because we have samples from the area which are being analyzed at the moment. We had some small amount of money from Al Jazeera and a few uh, Arab people who gave us money. These, these uh, epidemiological studies are very cheap to do. You know, they just involve our time, which we give for nothing. We had to buy the people out there uh, a generator because they don't have electricity a lot of the time. And we had to buy them a photocopier as well, uh, so that they could photocopy the questionnaires. But apart from that, uh, the whole thing cost about $2,000 uh, uh, just to employ a few, a few people to go around and knock on doors. Uh, and also, it wasn't without its uh, exciting moments, because some of our people were attacked and beaten up. So they went and knocked on doors, and the people thought they were from the Iraqi secret service, so they punched them on the nose and threw them down a well and all this sort of thing. So for some time, <laughs> we had to start sending people around to vouch for them, so we get the person from the local community to say, you know, this guy's a mate of mine, so it's all right. So we, got, so we got all of this stuff, and then shortly after we finished, Iraqi television um, transmitted a program on the news saying that uh, a, a survey was being done to, on health in Fallujah and the people who were administering the survey were terrorists uh, and that anybody who was found with, you know, answering this question or delivering the, the questionnaires or anything would be arrested. So it was, it was pretty, pretty exciting, but of course not for me because I'm a long way away, so, uh, just for the people we had out there. Um, so, yeah, so what we're doing next is we're going to look at the health effects, uh, we're, we're going to look at um, concentrations of metal ions and uh, uranium in the hair of the parents of children with congenital malformations and compare them to the hair of, 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 of parents whose children are okay. So that's like a case control, a group case control study to look at the concentrations of uranium. But that's going to cost a lot of money because uh, each one of those measurements we have to have done at an industrial laboratory and that costs about four or five hundred pounds per, per sample. So at the moment we're trying to get money to do that. We set up a foundation, or rather Malak set up a foundation in London uh, to take the money. So that's the story of Fallujah. It's, uh, it's all over the internet and um, I've been interviewed by Russia Today and, and you know, uh, BBC and Al Jazeera and Italian television and so on. So I'm quite the star. So there we are, that's it. Also, what for you can look at what I am about to have to do with the kids and click or know that they look on their family. And then on first, and then on first, and then on the 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 det här är ett tecken på att en allvarlig genetisk påverkan. Mm. Mm. So this means that that you have 860 that were born for, for thousand girls. Yes, yes. No, that's But just the ratio. 10,000 10, um, teenagers. There's 1,010 teenagers. Well, the, the show, show the table one. Table, show, table one. Table one. Table one. Just the, go down. That already some there. sounds. Boys has already died. Yeah, here, here you are. That's right. They die in the womb. So, so there were more, more. There were more than ten thousand ten born. That no, 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 no. This is the number born. The actual yeah, they numbers. Die, they die the actual numbers born were much less than that. So, in, uh, so in, in Fallujah, in our in our group, not in the whole of Fallujah, but in our sample, yeah, yeah? the number of children who were born uh, in this in this naught to four age group in that period in that five years was two hundred and thirty four boys and 232 girls. So the sex ratio is just... Yeah. Is just but, I mean, if you can look at 15 to 19, yeah. this is the living... Yes, yes, of yeah. course. Yes. So some of them have already died. Yeah. No, no, the, the ones 15 to 19 were not exposed as much. Yeah, 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 yeah I understand. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, the, the, the figures born would have been still more. Because some girls have yes, yes, right. yeah, already yeah, died. Yeah. There was a sharp, there was a sharp reduction in the birth rate after yeah. after the, after yes. that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, so a lot of miscarriages. We, we did do miscarriages, but we did, we haven't put that in the paper. Mm -hmm. And okay. probably if you look at these 800 and six, these 270, 234 males, 
after five years, more of them will have died. Yes, yes, than that, almost, almost yes. certainly. Yeah, uh, almost certainly. But uh, it would be interesting if you have the figures for, for the other age groups also, if you have the, the figures for born children. Mm -hmm. Do you have that? These uh, are the yeah, born. these are the figures. Yeah, that, but for the five, nine, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, or 15 to 19, is that, do you have the figures for the born children? No, but those are the, the ones who were born 15 yeah, years ago. That's right, they, they were. The, okay, 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 yeah. okay, yeah. that's the birth, birth figures. Okay. Yeah. So what happened in the year 2000 then, since? Oh yes, in the year 2000, the sex ratio was was exactly right. 2000. It's not because you have. No, no, you can't you can't do that because these people. This is this is much later on. So you you know, I mean, you could argue from that that in the 60 to 64 age group, the sex ratio was very peculiar in the year 1970. You know, but this is not the born. Because people die. That's the point. This is. You found 234 boys in the age group. That's right. Absolutely. So there could have been more born yeah. that died at, at year one, yes. one year one. This is the, yeah, these yeah. are the living you people. These yeah. are the living people. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. what I mean. If you, yeah. but if you have the figures, I don't know if you can collect them. No, you we collected can't. also we can't. no from the, for in the interviews you could have collected also the children who had died up to 15. We or did. 19. We did. We did. We got yeah, them. but they are not in here. We're not. Put, no, they're no. not in there. No. no. But we got so there. that was. To see the born children would be more interesting than to see the living. Uh, the first time are the newborn. No, and they the are no, they're not. No, 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 they are the children that are living between zero and four years of age. They are still living. Uh -huh. I think yeah. it would be difficult to do that because but we. If they are, if I ask them for also for the dead children. Yes, yes, I agree. But we, we, did, we did ask them for the, for, the, for the children who died between naught and one. Okay. And, we, uh, and we have we have other figures for cancer, but we don't have children who died between one and four. We don't have. And not issues. not between fifteen and nineteen. No, no, we don't. Have that. No, that's okay. That's yeah. okay. It's next time you do do well, you count the born children. I, the problem the problem is this that with with questionnaire surveys, and I found this is if you ask too many questions, you don't get the you, you, people get bored. You know, they don't. They, they just, want to talk. They want to talk about their dead children. Well, I, I, maybe so. Maybe so. Yes. But, um, yes. And maybe you're right. Maybe we should that's do that. Again. But um, but that's what we did. So that's all we can all we can report. You know. Um, so thank you so much. And uh, any questions? Uh, yeah, there were some. This was question. Uh, what you said. Uh, yes, yes, I'm sure, of course, yeah. Yes, 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 absolutely. I mean, my, my, my interest is to study uh, the, uh, the cancer risk by distance from the Baltic Sea, and so I, I want to do that. If I can get funding to do that, um, that's what I'll do. And I'll also measure uranium, because interestingly, a very large proportion of this radioactivity is from uranium, but nobody measures uranium. In fact, I went to Helcom and they don't measure uranium. There are no measurements of uranium. Uranium is actually the source material for nuclear power. All nuclear power stations are actually saturated with uranium, but when you go to look at the measurements that they make, it's always measurements of fission products, it's sort of cesium, strontium, plutonium, all these things. Nobody measures uranium, it's the invisible acetate. Do you know how the, the contaminations uh, exit from, from Stolzwe to the sea? In what flow of I don't know. I don't know. We ought to. Know, we ought to know that, and I don't know that. But Per has, has has done much more research on Stutzvik than I have, and he probably would be able to find it. If he if he if he if he if he, if he can't uh, if he hasn't got it, then it's certainly possible to, to discover it. I would think, because we just get on to the radiation protection people and ask them, and then somebody must measure that. Mm. Yes. Uh, Kan det vara så att när Hiroshima-bomben föll så fanns det inga miljögifter? When Hiroshima bomb was, there was no environment poison. Och rea radioaktivitet är inte så farlig när det är Men om man tar nu, till exempel i Sverige, 
där vi har massor med miljölifter i kroppen. Så yeah. so, so today you 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 are interacting with your man tar radioaktivitet. Så öppnar vi upp cellen så att vi kan få in cellen lättare. Yes, yeah, so this was an idea. This was an idea. Chernobyl. Där har de en tag i den filmade resnus. Där djuren och växterna levde bra. Kan det vara så att eh, radioaktiviteten inte ger så mycket mutationer i det förbjudna sånt där inte våra miljödifter visstår ut där frågan. Men svaror som kommer utifrån och har miljödifter i sig, de blir sjuka i det radioaktiva. No, there, there was a, there was a film shown on the Swedish TV, and I think it was rather deceptive because they were showing animals in the Chernobyl area, but it was also said that these animals come from outside, so one doesn't know how quick they die. But Swedes thought that they can live in this. Yeah, okay, I've got an answer to that. There, there was a study, there was a, study, a big study last week. Last week, if you look on the internet, you type in Chernobyl animals. Um, which showed that the diversity, the biodiversity of animals in the zone has, is, is, is collapsing. So the, the animals are all dying in the zone, mm. as we would expect. Just you want to say that to me? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Also, the, the, the visar that the number of arters are going to decrease, and they are going to be reduced. So Det, det du inte fattar var att de flesta av de där djuren de visade, de hade sugits in av ett vakuum när det inte fanns några djur som, som mm. åt växterna och så vidare. Så, så att det gäller ju inte för växter. Ja, I början så dog ju allting ut. Ja, men, det, men sen... Jo, men det, de djur man ser, de har kommit utifrån och sen ja. dör de undan och hela tiden är det, är det ett vakuum där, där alltså det finns mat för, för djur och så de kommer utifrån och då ser det ut som det finns... Anyway, I'm sorry, but we have to go on. Ja, jag har två guys here. You, you haven't mentioned the alpha and beta radiation, and in Sweden we learned that alpha radiation is the most dangerous internet, internet channel, and an inter, internal. Uh, yes, yes. 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 But why you you only talk well, about? Well, because I have a limited amount of time. I, I mean, if I had a, you know, so I, I have to have to decide on what I present in the time available. But you're quite right. Alpha radiation is much more densely ionizing and therefore it, 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 it does carry a much greater internal hazard than the rest of it. So alpha emitters like uranium incidentally are much more dangerous because they are alpha emitters. Uh, and internal, uh, particularly internal partic particles of, of um, alpha, uh, alpha emitters like uranium and plutonium are particularly dangerous because they form a little star of, of radiation effects which, which affects a community of cells, and we now know that cancer is actually a, a, an, a, originates in a community of cells, and, uh, and and yeah, so yes, but I didn't say that because there wasn't enough time. Okay. okay. And, and we the, have we have the combination with the, the chemical uh, poison of oh, radium. Yes. And well, as as far as that's concerned, I think I don't think that I think the chemical effect of uranium is a radiological effect. Uh, which I didn't have time to talk about, but one of my discoveries, which has now been shown to be uh, uh, true, and which is shown on the cover of this book, in fact, the picture on the cover of this book shows a uranium particle which is being irradiated by gamma rays. And because uranium absorbs more gamma rays than tissue, uh, in proportion to the fourth power of its atomic number, the atomic number of uranium is 92. So 92 times 92 times 92 times 92 versus water, which is 8 times 8 times 8 times 8, makes it about 500,000 times more likely to absorb a gamma ray. Uh, and then it emits these little photoelectrons. And these photoelectrons are then emitted into the local area of the uranium particle. And in this case, the uranium particle is always on the DNA, because DNA and binds, the uranium binds to the phosphate of the DNA very, very strongly. So this is a... a, a, a this hasn't this 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 mechanism has not been incorporated into radiation risk, and I think that that is the origin of the chemical 
effect of uranium. It's not a chemical effect at all. It's a, it's a modulated radiation effect due to the high atomic number of uranium. And lead would have the same effect, and so would gold, and so would uh, platinum. And, and uh, in fact, that's probably how the platinum complexes that are used for cancer therapy work, is they bind to the DNA, and then they suck in the gamma radiation, and they shoot out the photoelectrons. And somebody's actually patented this now in America as a, as a, cancer, as a cancer treatment. So we know it works, because it's been used as a therapy. And I tried to patent uranium, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> no, no, they, they wouldn't let me because you're not allowed to patent things that can help people, you know, in, in, uh, in hospitals. It's, uh, any, in thera therapeutic substances, and you cannot patent them. But I, want, I didn't want to patent it anyway, I just wanted to put the patent application in so it would make it clear that this was happening, you see. So it was a little bit of a Trojan horse. Um, yeah. Now we've changed the slides, so uh, I would like to see that table again. We don't have the times, I'm sorry. So, brief question. Why did you have an average of two years before Chernobyl and then four years after? Why did you two Because we only have the data going, oh, Chernobyl, oh, I see. That there is cancer in Sweden. I can't remember why, I think maybe the data anyway. You have no. data from 1970, and you pick out some of them. So why don't you show the whole trend? Very expensive. No, no, I, can't, I, 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 I agree. So, 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 I, I agree with you. I could have. You have I, more database. Yeah, I could have done it. I could have done it. I don't, yes. know, I don't know why I didn't. I don't know why. I can't remember. Because there are a constant increase since at least 1970 of breast cancer if you look at the full plane. Oh, yeah. So, all right. So then you tell me why it went down in the inland counties. I'm sorry? We can do it today. Then if there's a constant trend going up, why is it going down in the inland counties? Well, uh, that, yes. are you seriously saying that it was beneficial to have the Chernobyl accident for people, for women living in Yamla? No, what I'm saying is that the main effect is an inhalation effect from coastal, coastal communities. But your list does not contain Gotland. What? Your list did not contain the county of Gotland, which to my knowledge is pretty much... It's the in the sea. It lies in the sea. It's an island. Yes. No, I don't know. I just chose what I saw on the map. Gotland is not a land. Gotland is a coast. I mean, I'll put together with the data and data base. And oh yes, I know, I know why, I know why. I left, I left, out, I left out Stockholm, didn't I? But the reason is Stockholm. Have I got Stockholm? Oh, I don't know. Did I you know. Did I just, well, I tell you what. Okay. what I, here, here, here is the thing. I mean, if what you're suggesting is that I was uh, boundary loosening in order to find an effect, what I suggest you, what I suggest you do is you do it yourself. Okay. I'm, I'm interested. Great. I'm interested. Wonderful. <laughs> Because I, I, I don't find this to be a very, you are very respected in this community and what I think what you're saying is very interesting. I'm not a uh, radio No, 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 you don't have to apologize. But listen, I'm very interested in this stuff. And but it's a lot of charity. So how can I trust what you're saying on the important things when this is available to the whole Swedish population? Yeah, well, but who is doing it? But who is doing it? It's available there. Yes, I mean, it may be available, but nobody is doing the work. It may be available, but nobody is doing the work. And it's great that you're doing the work. It's great that you're doing the work, okay? Welcome, welcome. So we, Thank we'll, you. We'll certainly collaborate with you if you want to do the work with us. Absolutely. You know, and we're not going to shoot you down and say that you chose the wrong data or any of that stuff, you know? Thanks. We have to uh, go further. Thank you so, so much. So we can take, we can take this further.